And we are back. It's your man Odell, aka R by Odell, back for another episode of Odell's Roundtable. First off, I want to thank you for checking out the Roundtable, however you're looking at it, whether you're watching us on YouTube, listening to us, podcast, however you support, it is appreciated. You can always follow me, check me out on all social media uh, at Art by Odell, A R T B Y O D E L L. Uh, make sure you support and follow me on YouTube. <clears throat> uh, normally, I am recording out of the live hip hop daily studios. As you can see, we're not doing that right now. The Rona kind of mm -hmm. got some things messed up, but please still shout out to uh, the live hip hop daily team. Herb, shout out to my man Jay Black, Innovative Black Station, always supporting me. But here on the round table, we talk about relationships, right? At one point, we talked about dating and relationships, but like I've said in the past, it's the wild, wild west out here. You got to get it how you live. Um, you're on your own with that. But I have been blessed uh, to have a knack and be able to build great relationships in life and business networking. And I feel that it's so important. And I want to do my, best, my, my part to provide value. And plus, I use my platform to introduce the world to amazing people that I feel you should know about. And I'm blessed and excited to have one of those amazing people here today. Let me, let me properly introduce her, right? So this is a person who is not about sitting around and waiting. Uh, she is someone who is in the middle of the action uh, when it comes to uh, sports and entertainment. She's a reporter out of Inglewood, California, and she's worked with media outlets <laughs> such as Rolling Out, uh, Black Girls Nerd, uh, Black... Black Girl Nerds, uh, Luminarity, uh, Boxing Insider, and she is also uh, the founder and creator of Bad Culture TV. So please help me welcome my friend, the, the woman who actually gave me my first opportunity to write about soccer on a sports media outlet, my friend, Jandra LaBeouf. Thank you. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be with you. It's been too long. It's been it's, too long. It's been so I'm happy to be here. It's been way too long. I'm very excited uh, just to, to speak with you. You know, I was going to say real quick, <clears throat> one good thing about this came uh, about how this Rona thing, right, is that uh, I have, I shouted out a lot of Hip Hop Daily, and I, I work with them uh, for some years now here in Atlanta. And it's been a blessing because so many people come through Atlanta, right? And they come through Atlanta, so I could always try to say, hey, you know, when you're in Atlanta, let's come to the studio, or let's, let's do a show. And I've been blessed to have some, some amazing people pass through, and there's people who live here. And so, but what it's forced me to do now is that having really been at the studio, it's forced me to say, hey, you know what? Why wait for some of these people to get to Atlanta? Let me go ahead and reach right. out to some people who, uh, which I, I feel confident that they, you know, travel and everything will come back again and stuff like that. But it feels good to not wait anymore and reach out to people like yourself and other people. Like the first couple of interviews I've done so far are people that I know quite well. And I'm like, oh, I know I get them when they come to Atlanta. So I'm just blessed that that's one good thing about it. It's, it's, it's prevented me from waiting now. So I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to have you here today. Super excited to be here too. Like you said, it gives us the opportunity to connect in a way because I can't just pop up. I mean, I don't have it like that yet. I can't just pop up on the Atlanta studio and uh, do an in studio. So if I can't pop up in Atlanta, which I definitely want to do eventually, oh, sure. then uh, this is the next best thing. Right, this right. Well, thing. let's go right into it. So what made you want to get into media? You know, I've always loved people. I always liked talking to people. When I was young, I took one of those MMPI tests and they said, you should either be a shrink, a lawyer, or a reporter. Oh, okay. Or an AR, AR person. Those are the four uh, choices that they gave me of what would be an ideal career for my personality and things. And I didn't quite go that way because like I, like so many people in our age range, have older parents who are like, you can't make no money doing that. You need to work for the county or a job where you can get a pension. You need to work for the city. And yep. so, you know, when you have older parents, you have to heed that wisdom. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, um, while I was working for the city, um, I met Robert Littell, who owns Black Sports Online, who's a yeah. good friend of mine. Yeah. And uh, I, I, well, I started blogging before that. I was blogging about boxing, just kind of hobbyist type of thing. And then uh, Robert Littell, who was a buddy of mine, he was like, look, I just need a body to go show up at this thing because I had to mm. fire my last person and I just need someone to go. So to make sure I was there. So I went and I thought, well, 
I've done boxing and I kind of know who these people are. So I'll do a couple interviews. And uh, while I was there, I really liked it. And it just kind of took off from there. Nice. <laughs> that is so true. I mean, a lot of times, uh, I mean, I had the same type of thing as well. That's one of the reasons why I do so much with Odell's Roundtable, because I want to give back tips and feedback and value to help, mm -hmm. you know, people want to get started earlier because like yourself, you know, my dad was in the military, so I've lived all over the place. And when I finally got, you know, to Atlanta, I kind of got into the media thing, but that was not even a, a question whether, you know, whether it had been, I mean, uh, you know, I have a background in art, that was, that was a fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now yeah. even doing what I do now can be a fight, right? But you Absolutely. mentioned boxing and I want to touch on that because I know I mentioned in the beginning, uh, that you write for Boxing Insider. But let me let me not brush over that. Like, uh, you know, John Drew is going to sit here and <clears throat> be humble right now. But Ooh. we're talking about, I'm not saying that she just does blurbs about boxing. I'm talking about this sister is at the weigh-ins. This sister is at the biggest fights of the century. She's at these fights. You're talking about the Mayweather, the Pacquiao. She's at the gym. She's interviewing the trainers, things like that. What? How, how did you get into boxing and get so heavy into it to where you are now? You know, with boxing, it's interesting because my dad liked boxing a lot. My dad liked okay. two things. He liked boxing and he liked baseball. I mean, he liked football too. And he liked, you know, typical, you know, red blooded man, like a lot of different sports, but right. he really liked boxing. And it used to come on during the day on Saturdays, a wide world of sports and all those other old school shows. Okay. And my mom worked on the weekend, so I was at home with my dad. And so he's like, you know, sit down, baby. I'm going to show you a Sugar Ray Leonard. I'm like, oh, okay. I don't want to watch this. But I, so I got to watching it with him, and it was amazing to me as a little girl, like, wow, these dudes are okay with beating the hell out of each other. And they can shake right. hands afterwards and leave. That was intriguing to me just from a human perspective, the – the amount of uh, bravery you have mm. to just willingly go in and just start scrapping with somebody because I'm the youngest. I was scrapping with my brother all the time and it wasn't like willingly. So, you know, just the idea that right. you could go into a ring and do this. So I was intrigued by that. And then my godparents, uh, my godfather's brother was a heavyweight contender in the 60s. And so they okay. too also fans of boxing. So they would have a lot of boxing on over there. And so I didn't ever really think any mu anything about a career like that was unheard of. You know, women yeah. working in boxing, you know, what is right, that? Right, Everything right. came together for me. Then uh, when I got older and I moved back to California was when the uh, contender was a big thing on CBS. He used oh, okay. to come on after Survivor. Yeah. It was like Survivor, when Survivor, old school Survivor was at its height <laughs> of its popularity, like Richard right. Hatch Survivor. Following that was the show, The Contender, which was like a tournament series about boxers. And from watching that, uh, I was very intrigued by the backstories of the fighters and the humanizing element of who it made these people are. Because we think of athletes like pieces of meat, you know, yeah. that are just out there for our entertainment. So for this was the first time I had a chance to see like the fighter, the father, the husband, the struggling to make ends meet, taking care of their mom. And I just fell in love with that storytelling and so later on, when I met our friend Ismail Abdul Salam, yeah. who's been on the show before, um, I met him at a fight in Vegas at Mayweather Cotto. I wasn't even a, a reporter yet. My birthday's in May, just passed. Shout out to me. Um, <laughs> Ismail was like, you know, we don't, there are like no sisters doing this, and we need more diversity of voices. You should consider, you know, doing some hobbyist blogging. And I'm like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't know. I'll think about that. Because at the time, I was writing more about culture and music and, right. and you know, L.A. scene type of thing. That was more the lane I thought I wanted to go into as a writer. And so as I got to following boxing more and writing about it more, I started kind of capitalizing on my unicorn status, okay. black okay. female yeah, yeah, at the yeah. point. And so I just dug in deeper and deeper and... What allowed me to progress was the fact that people thought I didn't know anything. You know, everybody wants to challenge yeah. you if, you, look, <laughs> if sure. you don't look the part, you know, which in boxing oh, is man. still middle-aged white male, old white male. 
And so everybody right, wants right. to challenge you. What do you know about boxing? What do you know about boxing? That's so cute. You and I can I can boxing. imagine too, especially when you uh, would be with uh, what's the girl, Raging Babe. I, I yeah. always do your show, everything. Even, and I can just I, I can even see that. now, even knowing all that, people still want to challenge. Raging Babe is a promoter. She promotes her own shows now. <laughs> And it's, you know, it was through all of that that kind of brought me to this crossroads. Like if I'm really gonna do it, I'm gonna do it for real and be knowledgeable and do my research and talk to fighters, talk to trainers, talk to promoters, talk to business right. people and really have a comprehensive knowledge of the sport, not just be a fan of a fighter or a fan of an outlet. So that's kind of what the early, early days were like. Now wow. I still write about boxing more of my duties now, since I'm not on camera, since there's no fights. Um, <laughs> right. I've been doing a lot of production work for the boxing insider podcast, but I'm still in there. Nice. Nice. And that, yes. And you know, it's so funny too. I mean, you literally, uh, this led me into my next question or my next area I was going into, because like I said, on the round table, we do talk about relationships, right? Building great relationships. And I know you through our mutual friend, Ismael. And I wanted this to speak on, because a lot of times, you know, people like yourself, me, Ismael, and I'm not saying this to be kind of like bragging or whatever, we, we're really considered about the work, right? Like we're really more concerned about doing quality work. And so I was gonna right. say like, how important would you say it is to work with and collaborate with good people um, as opposed to it's so easy to cloud chase it's so easy to, to go for the clicks and things like that and the popular type things but how important would you say it is to collaborate and really just work with good people who are just they might not have a gazillion followers right but they're doing quality work in this field usually what i've noticed is those relationships are everything because those are the people who usually have the longevity in whatever require in whatever lane you choose. Um, I can't stress the importance of relationships more than anything, because like you said, there's a lot of people who do for the clout. You have to decide how long you want to stay in the lane that you're in. If you're doing mm. it just for the clicks or whatever, you're not going to last very long because there's always going to be that next person, that younger person, that quicker person, that more tech advanced person, that more creative <laughs> person who can yeah. get the clicks and get the content out there quicker than you. However, established relationships with good people who've been doing good work in the sport will take you a lot further because it'll make you privy to things that you might not have come in contact with. And plus, you also have to think about the reputation that you want to establish in your industry. Uh, if you become known as that click writer, well, I mean, no one's going to really want to tell you anything unless it's sensational, like a TMZ type of thing. And that's cool. There's nothing wrong with right. that if that is the lane you wish to pursue. I can tell you from firsthand experience that that's a, it's a rough lane that ages you very fast and there's no longevity in it because along with the, the funny stories, you have to report the crap stories, the sucky stories, the arrests, mm. the, the rapes, the prostitutes, all that stuff yeah. that you not necessarily want to write in it from, you won't, you won't want to write from a point of view of the, the instant boom, like, look what happened. You yeah. might want to get, when you get to the point where you want to get into the storytelling and both sides and comprehensive reporting, people remember that. And they're like, aren't you the actual <laughs> fire writer? Yeah, it's so kind of like almost, well, what you said is, you know, it kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, you're out in LA, we speak of Hollywood, it's, kind of, it's almost like that uh, comedian actor, right, that's been doing comedy, 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 and then they try to do this dramatic role. Like, yeah. a lot of times, the first time they try you. to do it, yeah, people are like, what you, like, what are you trying to do? So, like you said, it's, it's, once, there's nothing wrong with that lane if you want to go that popularity lane, you want to go that cloud chasing lane. But once you get into it, like you said, that's a that's a car that really doesn't have any other option. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes there's no reverse in that car. So, you know, good luck. You know. It's crazy. The people who have helped me the most that I consider friends and mentors and everything in this industry <laughs> are people that no one ever really knows. You know, they're kind of like the machine that makes the engine go or right. the cogs that make the engine go. And that's on every aspect from PR people to yes. promoters to to anyone, to, to the camera guy. It could be the grip. <laughs> you know, it could be anybody yeah. who will yeah. text you and be like, hey, might want to check this out. It's not always going to be the star. If you, you mm. can't fall in love with the star. 
because they're yes. always going to move on to bigger and better. And it's hard to maintain relationships if your attachment is only to stars. It's all about the people who are grinding around you. Those are those critical relationships. So true. I mean, I've seen that, especially uh, with doing uh, music and hip hop and covering different festivals and whatnot. A lot of times, you know, people have seen me get media access to certain festivals and you'd be amazed that, you know, me making friends with a security guard and me making friends uh, with the person that was checking me in to get my media pass has uh, paid off more dividends than it was that the fact that I, I sat down with this national artist. So I can go all day on that. But I exactly. mentioned earlier that, you know, you gave me the chance and the opportunity to write about oh, soccer. That is so dope. And I'm forever grateful for that. Um, oh, it's my pleasure. You no, know, what, what, what I want to say, though, is how important it is that you know, when you have your own outlet, right? Or when you have something of your own that you create, I want to I help somebody today. Let's help some people, right? Like, let's help them out. Let's help them I out. I feel like, like a number should pop up on the Let's help some people. <laughs> let's help some people. Let's help some people out. Let's help some people out today. But it is so important that you run it uh, like a major media platform, Absolutely. right? Because I I respect and I I uh, appreciate the fact that you were like, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know how, I need to know who the soccer person is, but just have a piece up and it's do this and it boom and do that and everything. And that helped me. And I'm like, whoa, okay. Just the seriousness of it, right? And that's the same way I do uh, with my thing. Like I said, I don't care. It doesn't have to be on a national TV. Like, I take it serious. I send my emails. I try to follow up with the person. That's I don't right. know what we're going to do, things like that. So, you know, help some people who want to get started, but emphasize that it's not just a cakewalk. It's not just now, like, you just oh. run this thing. <laughs> Man, you know, I just talked yesterday about people who are starting right now. And don't let this time, don't let anyone discourage you. That's thing number one. Okay. Don't let any other voices discourage you from the lane you think you want to run. I'm not talking about colleagues and peers who are giving you constructive advice and constructive criticism. Okay. But as uh, most creatives will find, they will find themselves reliant on the praise of their own close family and friends. Mm, and so true. you can't rely on that because chances are you're expecting their, your passion is going to be their passion just because they know you. And it's <laughs> not at all. I can tell anybody who's watching to this day, to this day, that my mom has no idea what the hell is going on. <laughs> she does not know how she doesn't understand how I make money. That's always the bottom line. Well, how are you making money? Or how are you making money? Mm, don't worry about all that. Uh, until I start asking for some, don't worry about all that. So that's thing one. And a lot of those voices around you, whether they be, they could be siblings, they could mm -hmm. be aunts and cousins and parents and neighbors and things yeah. that you think are going to ride for you because mm. they don't understand what you want to do. And it's so far fetched to them. They can't see themselves doing it. There you so go. It's not that they're discouraging. It's that they just don't understand. And it took me a long time to learn that it wasn't something foul at work. It was just the fact that they just didn't understand Very and sure. their passion and my passion are not the same things because we're not the same people. So that is thing. Number one, if you make up your mind that this is what you want to do, you have to share your ideas and notions with people within your industry that you can trust. Mm. Who you, or if you have friends and family who are not in this industry, but they're just generally vessels of peace, that's who you talk to. Right. People who will receive what you're saying without telling you what you're doing wrong, because chances are they're not doing anything like what you're doing, so they can't tell you what's right or wrong. So that's thing one, one piece of advice I'll give anybody who is new, if you're starting today after watching this and you decide I'm home all this time, I want to start doing a podcast, a Zoom show, a, a, a Skype, whatever it is that you want to do, right. go into that little lane and that tunnel and, and, and just start it out. And after you start creating, try to find people out who you think are serious. Like, don't go to Tyler Perry if you're a filmmaker a new filmmaker and be like, hey, Tyler, I shot this little video short in my backyard three weeks ago. You want to check it out? <laughs> Tyler don't want to hear that. Exactly. But what you can do is you want to search out like, uh, say, Ava DuVernay's company, Array, or Issa Rae's company. They have a lot of resources for up and coming filmmakers. I'm just using right. that as an example. Right, right, right. So that's thing one. Thing number two, 
you have it it's hard to say this especially myself there has to be a balance mm. between work and life yeah you know there's always that notion team no sleep team no sleep <laughs> that's impossible it's impossible, impossible. Yeah. you have to rest you have to reset the mind just like a muscle needs time to reset and relax, especially in a time now where we're so consumed by what's going on in the media and we're yeah. fixated on our devices, our computers, our phones, and any type of streaming information, even watching Netflix all day, it takes its toll on your mind. So if you're a person who is in a, cre in a creative zone, set yourself a time to work on those creative endeavors, whether it be bullet journaling or just yeah. voice notes to yourself, but have that time, but also have time allocated to self-care. Had to learn that the hard way. No, so true. Thank you for just sharing that. Uh, I'm, I'm big on that as well. Uh, yeah, the, the hashtag, the team no sleep, things like that. I mean, Ridiculous. listen, you, you, your, your body, you have to take care of your body. That's one of the very more important things. I mean, a lot of people who follow me, uh, they, you see I post a lot of things about health and wellness and, and mm -hmm. fitness and things of that sort. I've been blessed to have a lot of good friends who are trainers and own their gyms, things of that sort. But you don't even have to go that deep. It's just, you know, once you just decide is to take care of yourself, because that's the most important thing. And that's where uh, people get confused. Uh, like I say, you, you'll take care of everything else, and how everything looks, but internally and in you, and the, the conversations you have with yourself are those the biggest ones. So, see, I'm about to get, we, we really help some people now. We've got to really put, that, put that number up. That. <laughs> and let me see, a third, a third quick tip. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself and your equipment. If you have some extra coins laying around, you don't have to buy. You, if you've got a bottle of wine, don't buy a bottle, another bottle of wine. You know, buy something for yourself that's going to help you with what you're trying to achieve. Or even on one of my favorite things to do is every year on my birthday, I mean, I'm 45. I've just turned 45. I've been on- Oh, the same age. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 45 years, th think about that. 45 birthdays, yeah. all the dinners, the drinks, the yeah. food, the parties, yeah. the kicking it. 45 years is a long time. Yeah. It's a long time. What I like to do on my birthdays now is I go through and I create an Amazon wish list oh, nice. of things that I okay. need that will help me with my career. And nice. when people, especially now in this quarantine, when people are like, well, what do you want for your birthday? I'm like, I don't, I don't need any food gift cards. I don't need any drink gift cards. I don't need any Harry and David pears. Like <laughs> I don't need, I don't need any edible arrangements. Like I don't need any of that. Go to my Amazon wish list and just pick one item there you and, go. and send me that. And I think that will be more beneficial to me in the long run. And then every time I look at it, I can be like, see, so-and-so believed in me. So oh, they man. invested in this mic or right. this box light or this ring light or this microphone yeah. or just those types of things. So don't be afraid to tell people, I don't really need drinks for my birthday because I'm going to drink anyway, but I really do need a mic to help nice. me start that new podcast. And those are all great things. And the last one you, you spoke on, I just, just want to say briefly, that is one of the biggest things. That's one of the things where I knew um, I was changing myself as far as thinking things, right? Like I remember being in Seattle, you know, with like a little mic that was connected to my iPhone. But, you know, being around amongst people who are from Rolling Stone in different areas, and then each time is upgrading it, learning different things, getting the tripods and stuff like that. But that's when I knew I was serious. And, you know, shout out to my sister. Like, this past, uh, my past, well, birthday, Christmas, whatever, uh, she, that's what she gave me. She gave me some podcast equipment because she saw her little brother who has been, you know, doing these things. And she was like, hey, listen, this is what I want to give you. You know, so, it, and, and, and what happens is when you start investing in yourself, the people around you will see as well. Because people be talking, people be talking, that's a thing, that's a teacher right there. People be talking, right? And saying what they gonna do, how they gonna do something, what they gonna do about something. They've been talking about this for years or whatever. But when they, somebody sees that you are actually putting money into it and they see that you're going to these things, the whole conversation changes. But like I said, I, I could talk with John Dr all day. Yeah, I wanna- We should make question. that shirt. Let's make that shirt. You be talking? Yeah. 
Let's, let's do it. And speak, speaking of t-shirt, you know, I read across. If you want to edit this part out of the podcast, <laughs> you know what? You can leave it in. And uh, I'll say, when I say, let's make that shirt, just bleep that part. Okay. And then we'll talk <laughs> off like, I'm dead serious. Let's, I, let's. Do you know, I remember when I, I, still, I still have your t-shirt, your, your t-shirt, uh, the hood runner. I know, you know, people, a lot of people ask me to bring those back. I might have to bring it back. Yeah, look at it, look at it. We're making business deals on, on this call right now. Making business what? deals. What? Actually, I should bring it back because that's all what people can do right now. Yeah, hood run, hood runner. You know, I there have you go. my notepad here. I'm going to write those things down. <laughs> there you keep, go. This is, this is how you keep it, crea keep it creative. Keeping it creative. Keep that down. But that Speak. other thing. Oh, yeah, we, we got that, we got that. We're going to talk about that. So here's the thing too, uh, we talked about just um, what we're doing. There's a certain level of confidence and being comfortable uh, that you have amongst being, talking to different people. I've been blessed to cover some of the biggest music festivals around the country and I've sat down with entertainment people and there's a certain confidence and comfortableness I have as well. Now you've talked with Hollywood people like twice as many as I have and, and much bigger names. Can you speak on just how you get to that point? Because sometimes people see that, right? They'll see that about us. And then also sometimes people are expecting because we might be with independent outlets and things like that. They're expecting that you're not going to be as confident in the room. And you're, a lot of times you're asking the questions that might go viral. Are you asking things with so much poise that people are like, hmm, let me go down that lane. But speak about how it's a process. It, it won't happen overnight, but you still got to embarrass yourself. You still got to go in there and jump in. But talk about how you built up your confidence and being comfortable with all these different settings that you are in right now. Like you said, it is definitely something that does not happen overnight. I listen to some of my old stuff and I cringe. <laughs> I <laughs> and I just think thing. it's so bad. I do the like, same thing. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. I'm like, I, did I really ask that? Like, was I that reporter? And, you know, I, um, it takes a while. Like with anything, Reporting is like a muscle. It's like going to the gym and lifting weights. It's all about repetition, repetition, repetition. And sometimes you're not going to, as speech, especially people who are just starting out, you're not going to be able to go out and say, hey, I'm going to go interview Will Smith today. I mean, it just doesn't work like that. It's a process. There's still, for all the dope stuff that I get, there's tons of things that I do not get. But what mm -hmm. I did in those early days when I was kind of on the upside or the lower side of the hump, trying to get over the hump, I would enter, I just talk, I would talk to the people in my house crazy. Like I would walk around and I would just pretend and I would mess with my mom or my kid or the damn dog or, you know, just even my friends, I would say, let me try this out on you. And I would just practice different techniques. And by doing that and feeling comfortable doing it with my friends, it taught me what did and what did not work right. because your people are going to be brutally honest with you. And if they're your real people, they do not care if they hurt your feelings or not, which is a good thing. And thing. what I discovered was that a lot of techniques that I was using early on were techniques that I thought were right because I saw other people doing them. And in essence, it wasn't being authentic to who I am and who my personality is. And yeah. the people I would play with would tell me that. They're like, well, why are you talking like that? That's not even your personality. <laughs> your personality is normally more this. So why yeah. are you? Hello, this is Walter Cronkite. <laughs> that's, not, that's not even your personality. So why even try to go in that lane if that's not what you're trying to create in terms of content? Don't be afraid to show who you truly are. If you're a funny person, be funny, but be right. smart with your intelligence. Don't be a clown. You can be mm -hmm. funny and still be, and, and still be focused and intelligent and ask good, insightful questions. If you're a serious person, be that serious person, but make sure your seriousness doesn't override your personality and the fact that it makes, your, makes you boring. Lots of people are serious. Hell, Trevor Noah, can be serious if you're not familiar with he is or even um i can't think of the other reporter that does the the late show who has a kind of serious demeanor but then he talks and he's hilarious right right so don't so, be afraid to embrace those aspects of who you truly are because the talent will appreciate it because they feel like they're talking to a real person so true i'm so glad you shared that and i hope people really 
take that in and use that. Uh, one of my mentors, who I always shout out my brother Jay Forrest and radio, one of the coolest things that happened for me is uh, I was part of the legendary Beats and Lyrics show, one of the longest running hip hop shows here in Atlanta. We we're on um, FM radio, uh, WRFG 89.3. And I remember one of the first times I got on the microphone because I was always in the background. And when a person got on the microphone, we record on Saturday nights, right? Uh, back when Atlanta was, I mean, it was just popping. And so I got on the mic and I never forget when I first got off the first time, you know, Jay was like, hey, listen, you know, he was like, well, you know, it's a Saturday night hip hop show. He was like, you know, you my, you my boy and, and, and I want you to be you. He's like, so don't be something that you're not, but you have to bring your energy up, you have to find, find how to do these things. And that was one of the biggest things for me because it showed me how to, like I said, to navigate, but still be myself, right? Mm -hmm. So I had to be, you know, I couldn't be like smooth jazz on a Saturday night, right? <laughs> but at the same time, I couldn't be like, hey, hey, I couldn't, you know, I had to be, yeah. I had to be authentic to Odell. And so once I found that groove, that's when I started moving other things. And that's when he actually was the one that pushed me to say, hey, man, you know, I think now it's time for you to do your thing, you know, you know mm -hmm. the round table, right? But I, it took that confidence of being able to be able to be on a Saturday night show. And once you, like you said, it's like a muscle, the more you do it, so whether if I am at a uh, event for a museum opening, I know how to interview the artists, whether I'm at a music festival, you know, or doing a Saturday night hip hop show. Like I have my lane, I've, I've been doing it so long. I'm not saying I've mastered it because I'm always a student, but I'm comfortable, you know, throw me in there. And I see the same with you. I, I'll see you interview so many people and I'm always excited. I'm like, man, like Jondra's doing, she's doing, she's being Jondra. Let me see what retarded stuff this girl's going to say. Whatever your friends <laughs> tell you, uh, that thing about you, that is that thing about you. You know, I would go in my approach to doing some of these interviews because I thought that I had to be, you know, entertainment tonight. And, you know, here's right. DeAndre LaBeouf and I'm going to be sitting today with <laughs> Odell and we're going to talk about relationships. Like, that's yeah. just not even my personality at all. But I thought that was right because the only images that I would see of the media are the network news right. or the, the flip, which is like the Jerry Springers or, and yes. that's not me. I mean, I'm crazy, but I'm not like that. <laughs> and so it was hard. I didn't find any examples of what I thought was effective, but I know that people always tell me, you are so crazy. You are funny. You are funny. You are funny. And so I thought, well, I don't want to be a comedian. So how can I leverage that in myself? So, right. you know, it's always my goal when I find, when I go into an interview, I got to make the person laugh. Yeah. I got to make here. the person laugh when Same we start here. off. Cause that's just the tempo of what I want my interview to be. Mm. You know, when you figure out what that authentic is thing about yourself is, whether if you're a brainiac or you a clown like me or, you know, whatever it is, hit it out the gate all you know always be your authentic self and it takes time because when you talk to these celebrities or some of these people it is very easy to get nervous yeah very it's easy. very easy and depending on who it is i still get a little nervous hell i just had an interview this past week um with somebody and i caught myself i was going to be a little nervous <laughs> and then i thought why am i nervous right I'm right you've done this i am yeah. So yeah. you'll, I'll, you know, maybe I'll tell y'all later on because the interview. Is <laughs> Listen, I, I you be, she be talking to the folks, man. She be talking to people. And you know, as well, it was, you know, Gabrielle Union and Jessica Elba. That was fun. <laughs> I thought, I knew, I, and then the other set this week was um, Issa Rae and, and uh, Kumail Nanjiani because they've got a movie coming out. Yeah. And uh, I never, the only person of those four that I'd interviewed before was Kumail Nanjiani. So I knew what to expect from him. And he's a comedian. He's really cool, cool right. and he's fun. And his energy is going to be here. But the wow. rest of the ladies, they were just like, you know, hey, sis, what's up? Yeah. Well, and also, too, I and just want to touch gotta... on what you just said. Oh, no, I just want to add on to what you just said, because that's so true. Because for myself, uh, one of my biggest things, if, if I have an interview and at some point, they don't say, hey, man, you know, like nobody ever asked me that question. Or, man, that was a great question. Mm. Or that question made me think. I feel like I haven't done my part because I feel like, like I right. said, that, that's my thing. Like when, I, when somebody leans back and they're like, oh, man, that's a great question. Good question. Nobody ever asked me that question. I, I feel that like. That is like ambrosia. It's ambrosia. Yeah. <laughs> someone says that. Exactly. Exactly. So 
uh, like I said, I, I could talk to Giandra all day. And we all oh, got wait, these. one more <laughs> tip. I'm going to add, since you say that, one more tip to add on, then that we'll move on. Every Whenever I write questions for an interview, whatever I write first, I throw all them questions away. Really? I write, I write out all my questions, and then whatever is the first draft, I throw them all the way. Because whatever I think of first, I always know those are the questions everyone's going to ask. Nice. I like that. So I get all those questions out, all those kind of uh, remedial, how do you feel, what do you think, da, da, da. any yes, no, if I look and see if I have any yes, no's, all those got to go. And then mm. I tear out the page, and then I start over and write a whole new set. I'm going to use that myself. I love that. It, it kind of reminds me so similar. Uh, I mentioned J-Force, but, you know, I mean, when I first started with everything, we'd have, like, different people come to the studio or, like, this hip-hop legend or this person come through. And I'm sitting there, and I've been taking notes and stuff, and Jay's, like, looking over to me, and I'm like, Jay, so you prepared? And he's like, oh, we'll see. And I'm like, dude, like, we got so-and-so coming in, walking into the studio. Or, like, what do you mean? And he's like, you know, all right. And then I look up, and Jay's asking these questions, and I'm like, Man, he's just in his bag. He's in his zone. Like, he's been doing it for so long. But like you say, all the other stuff, he just throws out the window. He'll ask a question. So after Norm, and I'm like, wow, I didn't even think like that. So I, I commend you on that. I'm going to take that tip. I hope you all oh, yeah. saw that. It's going to well. help you. It's going to help you tremendously because then you're forcing yourself to think deeper than what you already thought, which is probably surface anyway. And then you get into the real, like, why do I like this subject? Why don't I like this subject? What's yeah. intriguing to me as a fan and not, because I think a lot of reporters write their questions from the point of view that their audience doesn't know anything. And that's cool, depending on what, what you're trying to convey. But I always try to assume that my audience is not stupid, you there know? You so you I don't like the, I, I listen just from years of parents and siblings going, why did they ask that? That's so stupid. Who doesn't know that? <laughs> and so I kind of carry that in my, my process, like, yeah, that is a dumb question that people should know, especially in now in an era where you can Google everything. Right, people right, yeah. 10,000 commercials. So I try to get rid of any remedial questions from the rip. I love it. I love it. Absolutely love it. So listen, before I go into my last question, I want yes, to make sure that you uh, give the people how to connect with you, your social media, any projects you have coming up, any uh, like movie stars that you're I'll talk to on the rise and anything, any, any way you want to direct the people right now, the floor is yours. Okay. Well, I, first I will direct you all to bad culture TV, which is my YouTube channel. Please, please, please subscribe. I have a goal for myself, uh, to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I'm okay. at about 7,500 now. And why that's a huge, huge milestone goal for me. I have lots of colleagues, who have YouTube channels with far bigger followings, but my following is real, real <laughs> people. They're not, they're not payola or spam. They I are organically built traffic. And uh, how you can tell is by the numbers that my channels do. You know, I look at some of these channels that have hundreds of thousands of subscribers, but only like a hundred people are watching your videos. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> For those watching, don't be, don't let the number discourage you. Very true. My most popular video on my channel, two of my f most popular video real quick. One I shot with my camera phone because I messed up and I forgot the battery to my camera going to do a car shoot. And I had to shoot it with my cell phone. And it's my second most watched video of all time. It's at like six or 700,000 views. Oh, wow. And my most popular interview, I wasn't even supposed to be there. It was, I snuck onto the carpet because I was there for something else. My camera is slightly out of, my camera slightly out of focus because I wasn't supposed to be there. But <laughs> it's my most popular video of all time and it's going to hit a million views pretty soon. So subscribe nice. to my channel. You know, if you're bored, just turn the computer on, put it on a playlist, <laughs> put the computer on mute and just let it run. There so that's uh, number one, Bad Culture TV. Please subscribe. Please follow me on Instagram, Jondra LaBeouf, my whole full legal name, because I would sure like to be able to swipe up <laughs> on my content and the stories, but you've got to have 10,000 followers on Instagram. And I'm not willing to put no nudes on Instagram. So <laughs> you talked growth. about that. Again. <laughs> it's a slow growth. It's a slow growth, but it's a real growth. There so you that's go. thing too. And then make sure you uh, watch my interviews. I'm doing a lot of content right now for Black Girl Nerds. 
Um, so visit their website and their YouTube channel, subscribe. Um, I'm doing a lot of content for rolling out. I primarily write for rolling out. So uh, follow me on Twitter and I'll tweet out links or, or um, LinkedIn or wherever. Oh, I'll give that tip too. Okay. Don't be afraid. If you are very serious about what you want to do, no matter what it is, interviews, podcasts, whatever, post your content on LinkedIn. Yes. And yes. go and follow people in your industry. Follow the tar the people who work for the, think of a company in your mind, which would be the ideal company to work for, whether it be Netflix or Showtime or Sirius or whatever. Go find all the people who work for that company and add them as your friend on LinkedIn. Worst case, best case scenario, worst case scenario, if you add 100, 10 of them will follow you. And you yeah. never know who's watching your content. You just never know. I've gotten a lot of opportunities recently via LinkedIn, just posting nice. stuff on LinkedIn. Nice. So there's that. But yeah, so Black Girl Nerds rolling out Boxing Insider. I'm doing uh, more production work, but uh, subscribe to the Boxing Insider YouTube channel. I started building it from scratch about a year ago because they left it, you know, they were focusing more on the written content. So I've been growing that. I'm proud of that. It's finally to a profitable stage. Okay. You know, okay. Maybe we could talk about that. That could be a future show of how to really make your YouTube channel profitable, not this other nonsense that they try to get you these uh, lessons to get you to buy. Right, how to really grow it. So no, how I appreciate really that. That is so good. So uh, as I always in the show is I always say, so what are your keys to building great relationships? The keys to building great relationships, number one is sincerity of why you want that relationship. If there's a person who you admire, who you think would be a great mentor, a great connection, when you approach them about forming any type of friendship, business relationship, know what you want. What mm. you want from the relationship, one, and number two, what you can bring to the relationship. Because there are two things, What? well, one thing that annoys me more than anything, anything, is when someone emails me that I don't know and asks me, if they can pick my brain. Don't send <laughs> messages like that. No, you may not pick my brain because this is a lot of years of historical knowledge. Right, but we can right, collaborate right. and right. I, or I can mentor you, but don't just come to try to vacuum things that people have invested their time and money into learning and developing. And you and you be the main person investing money into it. My God. So... <laughs> Have, so that's one. Make sure your relationship, any relationship is sincere and think about what you want and what you can offer. That's thing number one. Thing okay. number two is always continue to cultivate your relationships. You don't have to talk mm. to people every single day. You don't have to be best friends. You don't have to what you do in them every single day. But, you know, check in. If it's a true business relationship, check in maybe every few weeks, once a month, remind people if they are at a level that you're aspiring to, check in right. once a month. Hey, uh, just wanted to say hi, hope this finds you well in this quarantine pandemic time. Um, I just wanted to share some new work I've been doing with you. Uh, mm. Take a look at it. Uh, I appreciate any feedback, et cetera. If there are any opportunities for us to collaborate, please let me know. So always, cultivate your relationships like any like like someone you were dating you have to stay up on them <laughs> yeah. you have to stay up on your professional relationships it takes the same type of energy yes. and uh, number and number three which is the most important out of all of them enjoy your journey mm. enjoy your journey don't get so caught up in what you didn't get, what you who did. Your this person got this, and you didn't get that. Right. And I, I feel like I should be so much further <laughs> than I am. Yeah. Think about where you were a year ago when you started. I started mm. in 2012, and it's 2020, and I wasn't Amazing. even doing entertain. I wasn't even doing entertainment then. It was a total fluke. I didn't start doing entertainment until 2017. Yes enjoy go back look at this stuff laugh at yourself cringe at it but realize how you have grown and evolved oh God, and taken the necessary steps to Sorry. get to what the end goal is oh and number four oh, one more like a more like a 3a 
take some time, <clears throat> take a pen or whatever it is, and kind of formulate a map of where you want to go before the end of the year or what you want to accomplish before the end of the year. Because you don't go on a destination in your car without knowing where you want to go. It's the same thing with any type of ambition. Create some type of map. Even if it sounds unrealistic and too big to you, good, bigger. Bigger, yeah. bigger, bigger. It should scare you. It should. Because if it doesn't scare you, you might as well work a nine to five. There you go. Wow. Listen, John, first off, thank you for taking the time to join me today. These, uh, those tips you gave are so true. I, uh, you must, you know, provide value. And uh, a friend of mine I interviewed on the show, uh, Trends, and he talked about that. Like, when people hit you with that, pick your brain. Like, no, like, that's a consulting <laughs> thing. Like, like, that's not play that. Super yeah. insulting. You yeah. wouldn't call, you wouldn't call, you wouldn't go to Macy's and say, hey, let me just borrow this. I'm gonna just take this shirt. Is that right. Cool? Right, you know, exactly. or your or your doctor. You can't just call your doctor and pick your doctor's brain. You gotta have insurance. <laughs> you gotta have insurance. You gotta make an appointment. So, yeah. I appreciate you for saying that, and also too for the fact that when you provided, uh, you know, going back to Odell's corner kick and give me that opportunity, uh, just collaborate with you has always been a pleasure. We do that. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, we we definitely uh, listen. Stay safe out there in LA Thank and everything. You. Shout out to you. Like I said. Happy belated on the birthday as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank it you. Does. I appreciate it. I'm going to sit here now and I'm going to drink some whiskey. Oh, well, there you go. I mean, hey, all, all rules are, there's no rules now. It's everything going on. You can drink whenever. <laughs> I know. I And plus I'm off this weekend because I did a lot of content last week. And so my brain, again, balance, my brain just needs to unplug from that. And also I'm going to start watching uh, the master class series. I, I, they caught nice. me and I, uh, they finally I, gave pulled in. The I pulled the trigger. All those YouTube commercials got me. Hey, I I've seen a couple of them myself, but I just haven't done it just yet. So listen, once again, everybody, make sure you follow John Drew on all social media. She's a great person to follow. She does quality, independent media. She does this great media in general. Uh, you provided some great tips today that even I'm going to put to use. And I just, uh, once again, I thank Ismael, our mutual friend. Uh, for that, and next time when you're in Atlanta, it's on me. Brunch, drinks. Oh, we oh. on. Holla at your boy. We, I got you. We got to, we got to celebrate our birthdays in style because we had to oh, yeah. do it, you know, during the run and everything. So Great. I just want to appreciate you for joining me today. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much, Odell. Always a pleasure. Anytime. Thank you.